Welcome to the Future of Life Institute podcast. My name is Gus Docker, and I'm here with Katja Grace from AI Impacts. Hey, Katja. Hey. Glad to have you on. We are talking about a number of surveys that AI Impacts has done. So maybe maybe you could you could tell us about the most recent survey and maybe also the past surveys. The most recent survey was the, the biggest one yet, which is very similar to the last two. So they're in 2016, 2022, and 2023. We started out just writing to everyone at NeurIPS and ICML. And this time we expanded it to six top venues. What are those venues? NeurIPS and ICML are particularly machine learning oriented. These are all AI venues. This time we, we expanded it to ones that are less machine learning related in order to be sure that we're getting kind of what do AI researchers think, not just what do machine learning researchers think. Fantastic. And so, so you mentioned that the 2023 survey is the biggest one yet. What, what does that mean? How comprehensive is, is that survey? Well, we had nearly 3000 participants. We had quite a lot of questions. And so we take quite a long time to answer all of them. So for, for a lot of the particularly less important ones, we randomize for each person which of a set of questions they receive. So partly to fit in more questions and partly to like try out different framings of the same, roughly the same question, because we, I guess we thought that there, there might be framing effects. And in fact, there have been like quite notable framing effects from how questions are asked. Fantastic. I want to run through some of the top line results here and we can discuss them and, and what they mean. So starting with the fact that the estimated time to human level AI dropped anywhere from one to five decades from the 2022 survey. So this is this is a, a pretty massive and a pretty, a pretty fast drop in, in, in one year. I guess it's around one year between these surveys. Why, why did you think the estimates from the experts dropped that much in, in such a short amount of time? The most salient answer is, you know, chat GPT being these kinds of things happened and were, you know, got a lot of public attention. I think I'm actually surprised that it had that big an effect because I think it was unclear to me whether this would move the, the AI researchers' views about things, especially since like between the 2016 survey and the 2022 survey, the time to HLMI, which is sort of all human tasks, roughly dropped or, or changed by like a year. So these things are, are by default, not just moving around all over the place. So I think this was a, a really notable drop. Yeah, and it's interesting because you would expect experts to be familiar or in the in a 2022 survey, of course, they're familiar with the state of large language models. And so why do you, why do you think that so the experts were surprised by chat GPT, basically? Apparently, I guess I think one thing it could be is like, it's a big field where people doing lots of different things, maybe they don't know what one another are doing necessarily. Or it, it could also be a kind of like, what does it feel like other people think like if you're sort of updating on what everyone else thinks is going to happen which makes sense then if there's more of a public reckoning about what's happening maybe maybe various people look at each other and like oh this is happening more so I, I guess i think we haven't yet talked about the chance of human extinction questions but i think it's interesting to compare how much those numbers didn't change since previous surveys. Because you might think that the thing that AI researchers would more already have a confident view about is like how things are going in AI relative to like what are the social consequences? Whereas it seems like the, the what's going on in AI questions saw, saw quite a shift, whereas the is it going to kill all of us questions didn't so much. In spite of like, I think, I think both of them seeing quite a lot of public discussion yeah, over 2023. In the 2023 survey, uh, the, the question around human level intelligence is the result there is that the experts expect human level intelligence by 2050, around 2050, and full automation of labor around 2100. Why the discrepancy? Is there a discrepancy there? Are these questions around the same thing? It seems to me like, as I understand the questions, like quite a big discrepancy in the both questions, to be clear, are asking about when these things will be feasible, not when they will happen. So it's not, not about like when will actually all the jobs be automated, just like for any particular job, could it be automated? They're both not asking about like one machine doing this. It's just like any combination of AI being able to do any particular thing. And so I guess I would think of an occupation as either 
like a very big task. <laughs> so, so then it would be included under all tasks or a collection of tasks. So it'd still be included under all tasks, probably. Or like you might say there's something else to like putting all the tasks together that you don't want to call a, call a task. But I still would have thought that once you have all of the components, you're not like 50 years away from having the, <laughs> the combination of them. Um, so I think on, on my read, I'm like, wow, this is logically occupations should happen before all tasks. Uh, and so this is like a framing effect. Some of my colleagues disagree on that and think of an occupation as consisting of things that are not included in tasks. So I think you could you could say something like that, but I'm not going to do a very good steel man of it here. What does it mean that it's a framing effect? It's sort of the people are maybe understanding it even as the same question, but something about like like when you get asked a question, it, it's not like there's a slot in your mind that has the answer to every different way that question could be referred to. Like the, the way the question is posed causes different things to come to mind or you to calculate it in a different way or something. So maybe like when you when you think all tasks, you sort of think of some tasks that the tasks you think of are like, I don't know, cleaning the floor, writing an essay or something. You don't think of a task like take over Europe in a war or something. And so like, you know, cause, cause that's like really out there, you know, if it, whereas if you think of occupations, then you do think of things that are like more central examples of occupations that are like big complicated things. And maybe you still don't think of like, you know, things that humans have done that are most wild and surprising as their jobs, but like you're, you're somewhere closer to it. If there's such a large discrepancy between expert predictions on on questions that are roughly similar, what, what does that mean? Does it mean that that the the people interviewed for this survey, not interviewed, asked to, in the survey, aren't really experts in forecasting AI? Maybe they are they are domain level experts in some narrow domain, but are they actually experts in forecasting AI? Uh, I think they're very unlikely to be experts in forecasting AI, um, and you know. I do think that you know there, there is expertise you can have in forecasting um, and, and they could probably be better at it. I guess I think that people who are experts in forecasting, ex like these are quite hard questions. Like when, like when will broadly this industry that we haven't seen yet affect like everything in the world? It's like quite a, quite a tricky question. Like I don't expect them to do well at it, but I, I think that humanity needs to answer these kinds of questions in order to make decisions. And so uh, I think the best we have is a, a mixture of, you know, asking people who do know something about AI, <laughs> asking people who know about forecasting, even if, you know, I think even predicting what will happen with AI in five years is not really their area of expertise. It's just like, you're know, related to their area of expertise. And so I also expect them to not do amazingly at that. Uh, though I expect them to do better than predicting what will happen in 100 years. So we mentioned these two predictions, human level machine intelligence at maybe around 2050, full automation at lab of labor at maybe around 2100. Uh, but we, we also mentioned that these estimates dropped a bunch from the 2022 to the 2023 survey. Do we then extrapolate out and say in the 2024 or 2025 survey, they will drop another three decades or something? It can, can, can we kind of extrapolate a trend of, of expert opinion uh, and then maybe just update our beliefs about, around when we will have AGI based on that? For the gap between them. I think there's like some evidence from like when we ran questions by people and tested them on people that they were sometimes misreading. And even if it explicitly says that it includes all tasks or something, they think of the occupation one as including robotics and the task one as not, or, or they think of the occupations one as including uh, implementing it in the world and the other one is not. Maybe like, I don't know, one instance of seeing these kind of errors in a small group of people or something like that. Where the, where the occupation one is the full automation of labor. Yes. Yeah. And the task one is the human level machine intelligence. Uh, yeah, high level machine intelligence. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But answering to a question, can we extrapolate these things? I don't know that I expect them to always be dropping a lot. Probably more expect them to to drop than to go up. But I, I guess I feel like I haven't seen enough of a trend to really predict this. It's difficult to make it to extrapolate the trend from three data points. But still, I mean that there is there. It's in the vibe that that these estimates are going down. But of course, we should we should remain kind of sober with the evidence. Yeah, I, I think people often think that in the long term, people have been like extremely overconfident about AI 
and then that their predictions have had to sort of go up <laughs> uh, over time. I don't know that that's right, that they have been, as, I, I think they've been less overconfident than people think if you actually dig up all the predictions and look at them. But still, like I think we've, we've seen, you know, people's predictions being longer as well as shorter uh, outside of these three surveys. So, yeah. But you'd be pretty surprised if the expert timelines go up in the next survey, right? I think I wouldn't be super surprised if they went up at all. Yeah, I think if they went up 10 years, I'd be pretty surprised. <laughs> Probably more surprised than I was here with them going down 10 years. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So in the survey, you also asked about a bunch of tasks and when these tasks would be automatable. And most of these tasks, the estimates for these tasks being automatable decreased. So I just have, I have a list here. These are within five years. Experts predict that an AI system can make a payment processing site from, from scratch, that they can autonomously download and fine tune a large language model and that they can generate a new song that sounds like Taylor Swift. That's within five years. I think these, if, if this comes true, the world isn't ready for it. Do you agree with these predictions personally? And yeah, what do you think of this? My views on these predictions are pretty, are pretty weak. I feel like I don't know very well what it takes to, to fully make a payment processing site from scratch. I think it does seem pretty plausible to me. And uh, this is the kind of thing where, I don't know, that I think the you know the people answering these questions probably know much better than me what it's like to you know at least do coding type things, which is like closer to the question and and know much more about like the systems involved. So I, I think I don't expect there's much reason for me to be more right than them. I agree that the world is not ready for that at all. If we talk about the further out predictions, the further out in time, that is, experts predicts that in 17 years, uh, AI or, and robotics in this case will be able to physically install the electrical wiring in a new home. They'll be able to, in 19 years, research and write a high quality machine learning paper. And in 22 years, prove mathematical theorems that are publishable in top mathematics journals today. The, those are pretty pretty intense predictions. Uh, and the, uh, 22 years is not that far away. I wonder if you think experts are better at predictions in the near term than in the long term? I mean, I think everyone is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think I would trust those ones less. But I, but I don't think that sort of tells us which direction to not trust them in. It seems quite possible these things will happen in less than that amount of time. I think especially for things where like, if a thing seems like it would be very socially impactful, I think that's kind of a heuristic against thinking it's going to happen. And why is that? Just because like, it would be like such a big deal if it happened and things that are a big deal don't happen that much or something. <laughs> or, or like, yeah, I'm not quite sure why it's so heuristic, but I feel like it is. Like, it's sort of related to the absurdity heuristic, perhaps, where it's like, well, I don't know, that would be, you know, I mean, I think it's sort of like, well, if this thing, people are claiming that AI might destroy the world, there's some sort of like, well, things don't destroy the world very often. But there's also like, I don't know, you're claiming this is the biggest deal ever. It's, it's almost by definition that big things don't happen that often because, yeah, but there's, there's, some, there's something to it. When you looked at, at these uh, tasks, specific milestones, were there anything about the ordering predictions about when these tasks would be achieved that, would, that surprised you? So, for example, did the order make sense? Why would an AI be able to write a machine learning paper three years before a mathematics paper, for example? I think I don't know a lot of details about what, you know, doing really advanced math research or AI research look like. I feel like from a distance from what I hear, it sounds like I don't know, math is more, I don't know, kind of like mysterious how it happens or something. I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's like reason to think that machine learning would be worse at it. If doing machine learning research is sort of easier to break into parts and know what you're doing or something, I might expect it to be easier to do earlier. But yeah, I'm really speculating here. I think the, the physical things being generally later was, was a trend, if I remember. And I think that sort of makes sense. Um, I don't know much about why, but it does seem like stuff that you can just do on a computer is generally easier. What about AI experts' uh, predictions about their own work? Did you find a bias towards saying that AI research is so difficult that it that it'll be automated as as the very last thing? <laughs> it's hard for me to know if that's a bias. I think I'd be more inclined to say they're like more likely to be right about that one than anything else. And then you know, because they do actually know what the job entails. I think also when 
when they say that it will be lost or like toward the end. I, I think there's some argument for that from like, well, if AI research was automated, if you expected AI to just go very fast, then it's like, there are not many things that would come long after AI research. So you might expect that many things come very shortly after AI research. Because if AI research was automated, then we would expect research to progress so fast that everything could be automated within a, a, a kind of short time frame thereafter. I don't know if you should expect that, but often people do expect that. <laughs> okay, so if you take this survey as a mechanism for predicting AI timelines or, or timelines to, to when AI will achieve certain tasks or, or certain, certain performance, how would you compare that to prediction markets, for example, or thinking about the stock market as a way of, of measuring AI progress? What do you, what do you think are, are the strengths and, and weaknesses of this survey methodology? Compared to prediction markets, the, the people we're asking probably know more about AI research than a lot of people in the prediction markets. It seems like prediction markets have a sort of mechanism for like people who know more spending more money and you know, being incentivized to do that. I think I don't know a lot about like how well that works in practice for the scale of prediction markets that there are and that sort of thing. I mean, I think I'd be surprised if like that many of these people were participating in prediction markets a lot just because it's like... <laughs> relatively small thing at the moment yeah I, I sort of expect that the the survey to have more like access to whatever expertise they have but less like being able to update on each other's views a lot and thinking about it with incentives on the line and uh, that sort of thing i have thought less about the stock markets as a way of inferring things about this it seems like you know there are a lot more incentives on the line to get things right there than there are in the survey, but I, I don't know how much other things complicate things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are also many other factors involved in the valuation of Google, for example, than just expectations of AI progress that Google will make. So, yeah, even though there's there's a lot more money behind it than than uh, a survey, for example, yeah, it might not be better. I think it's also much less straightforward to interpret. Like, even if it did have good information, it, the question of like interpreting it and there's like there's like interpreting it so that you understand it personally and there's an interpreting it so that the world understands it and i think there's for running the survey like i'm somewhat satisfying my my own curiosity but i'm also, i'm mostly hoping to inform the world and i think for informing the world about things there's a benefit to doing like simple enough things that people can clearly see what you've done and know that it's trustworthy whereas i think if i were to try and interpret the stock market for the benefit of the world um i think for one thing, it just wouldn't get attention, which I think is reasonable because it would be hard for most people. To, like, it'd be hard for a journalist to look at that and be like, "Oh, you did a good job of it," instead of a terrible job of it. <laughs> so, I think you, you sort of think about like the the whole information economy for you know figuring out which projects to do for <laughs> to get information about this to the right places. You also had a, had a section around what AI systems will be like in twenty forty three, so twenty years after the survey, and. There, the experts predicted a bunch of traits that the AI systems will have, where the highest, the most likely traits were things like finding unexpected ways to achieve goals, being able to talk to human experts on most topics, and behaving in ways that are surprising to humans. Are these surprising to you? Is, is this, this, this sounds like a trend towards capability in terms of talking like an expert, but also autonomy in terms of doing surprising actions and finding unexpected ways to achieve goals. I think I, I wasn't surprised to hear that they expect them to be able to talk like a human expert on most topics. Given that we are pretty close to that in, in many domains uh, right now. so I, I don't know how close we are to it. I, in my own experience interacting with like ChatGPT, say, I feel like it's, it's sort of hit or miss and then it's hard to really measure with your own experience how how far the misses are away but yeah it at least sort of feels like not super far away so yeah i think that didn't surprise me very much i think sort of finding unexpected ways to achieve goals is perhaps an ambiguous kind of thing that you know whenever something is sort of agentic and achieves goals it's like doing it somewhat unexpectedly but i think Probably people read it as like more unexpected than that, where you're, you know, more like, hey, wait, <laughs> why did you do that? I think I'm a bit surprised to see that so high. 
point since I think that sort of suggests like problems. I guess maybe across the board, there are sort of suggestions of many problems that these people are concerned about. The trait that was considered least likely is power seeking behavior. And this, this is this is kind of surprising if you compare it to the other traits I mentioned. So behaving in, in surprising ways and finding new ways to achieve goals. So if an AI behaves in a surprising way and and finds a new way to achieve a goal, how do you know that it's not engaging in power seeking behavior? <laughs> to me, it would be like quite surprising or it would feel surprising if we had like, I guess, new creatures that did have goals and were trying to achieve those goals and were like doing it sort of freely enough that we were surprised by their behavior. Uh, and I think another one that was relatively high up is, is something like, you know, lying to you, like deceiving humans without another human asking for it or something. I think if, if things are behaving like that, I it's hard to see how they would not be engaging in power seeking broadly construed where it's by power seeking, I mean, just like, not just trying directly to do the thing you want, but trying to get yourself into a situation where you can do the thing you want, like whether that's like getting some money so you can buy the thing or like getting yourself in a position of influence or just like causing people to be friendly with you more so that they'll do what you want with the aim of getting what you want. Ultimately, and it feels like a very broad kind of a thing where, yeah, maybe they mean something much more limited, but I would... I would assume that, I don't know, like if you looked at game AIs now or something, presumably they're engaging in power seeking. <laughs> you know, if, like if they're playing, you know, StarCraft or something, I assume that there are various things you do there to set yourself up to <laughs> beat other players. It would be sort of weird to me if we had strategic agents acting in the real world that weren't doing that. Why do you think experts rated power seeking behavior as unlikely then what, what what's what do you think was the thinking behind that i don't know i guess to me it sounds like the thing that's like most closely related to extinction risks or like real bad catastrophes happening so i could imagine a person being like putting that high is saying i think there's a, a you know a big chance of something quite bad happening here so it's kind of like like making a fuss in some sense or so or, or like there's this maybe more of a bar to raising the alarm there whereas maybe for some of these other things you're not like raising an alarm um but i don't i don't know if they're thinking about that i, I feel like maybe the connection between that question and you know extinction risk scenario is is more of like a niche thing to think about so hard to say yeah, let's get to the extinction risk question there. The way the way you uh, or you and your team at AI Impacts summarize this is that median respondents put 5% or more on advanced AI leading to human extinction or similar. Uh, and a third to a half of participants gave 10% or more. So, so you mentioned we talked about trends in in AI capabilities and, and expert predictions of, of those capabilities. And, and those, those predictions are dropping quite fast. But uh, predictions of extinction risks are quite stable between the surveys. The, are they stable between the 2016 survey to the, to the 2023 survey? So, so we asked various different questions about these, and there are different things you could look at about the answers, like, you know, what percentage of people said 10%, what's the median number, what's the average number, etc. So the question that we actually asked in all three years was the one about, like, how good or bad the future would be as, as a consequence of HLMI, and uh, so where people could sort of divide it up between five buckets, like, extremely good somewhat good good sorry i'm forgetting the exact wording but like there are five and the, and the lowest one is like includes eg human extinction so in 2016 that was the only question about human extinction we asked but then so for that question which we've kept the whole time the median answer for that worst bucket is five percent every year there was a different survey run by other people that got a lower number um between 2016 and 22 but yeah in our surveys it's been the same i think they changed the question a bit so it's not super comparable but it's pretty comparable, but not identical. Yeah, if if you take your impression of of all the evidence you've seen, what is there a trend? Uh, is there a trend in expert predictions about extinction risk from AI? I think basically not. There might be like a mild recent trend toward like less extreme views. The number of people, or the fraction of people who said ten percent, 
went down between 2022 and 2023, that the median stayed the same. I'm forgetting the like the, the numbers for all, like there were four different questions about this. I guess yeah, we we sort of added them as we went along after you know, sort of being curious about the thing last year each time. So I, I can't remember whether like that's you know a trend across different questions much. Yeah. So what's the right way to summarize expert opinion here? Because you could you could also summarize it as most experts believe that there isn't really a large chance of this happening or a large, large risk from AI. You could summarize it and you could kind of frame it positively. <laughs> I think you would have trouble framing it positively to like editor, a sensible listener. Like I think you could make it sound positive for a second or something. But I, like if you're, if your doctor tries to frame your cancer diagnosis to you, it's like, you know, the chance of you dying is like not that high. Like <laughs> I think it's like, I don't know. At least eighty percent, you'll make it. Like you're still like, wait, sorry, what? So I think like given given the stakes we're talking about, like if you if you take people's answers on this seriously, the fact that like most of them think there's pretty non negligible chance. I think even if it's like low as far as chances go, like in the context, it's like much higher than it makes sense to be relaxed about. So so there's no way to frame this positively or kind of spin it into something positive. I mean, I guess it depends on what you were thinking. I, I mean, there, there are you know, people around who think it's roughly 100% that will be killed by AI. Um, so if those people trusted AI researchers on this question, they might be reassured. Probably they've mostly thought about it quite a bit more and so they're not updating a lot from hearing this. Did you test about the participants' explanations of why there might be risk of extinction from AI or their reasoning? Did you test whether they, they had some arguments for this or how, do, how, do you, how did you make sure that, that this is a kind of an informed estimate? We did not make sure that this is an informed estimate. <laughs> we, we did ask like some fraction of people after each question some open-ended questions so that we could try and figure out what was going on. Um, I forgot exactly what they were, but along the lines of like, like, how did you interpret that question? What, what were you thinking in your answer there? But we actually haven't gone back and looked through those yet. Just like, it's sort of, it's a, a lot of work to analyze open-ended questions. Plausibly, we could use AI to do it faster, but yeah. We also asked people to assess themselves how much they've thought about these topics so we can say something about like you know the people who've thought more about it and the people who've thought less about it what what are their answers and do you have any results there preliminary results yeah so one thing is having thought more either a lot or a great deal about the question it was associated with a median of nine percent whereas having thought little or very little was associated with a median of five percent for how likely is AI to cause human extinction? Sorry, off the top of my uh, or like briefly, briefly looking at this, I'm not quite sure if that's across multiple questions or one version of this question. Now, but it's something broadly like that. So a bit, a bit more concern if you've thought more about it. And then it's hard to, hard to know to what extent that's caused by. If, if people become concerned about it, then they think more about it. But at least sort of rules out the picture where like, you know everyone who's really informed about this is like, this is silly. The reverse seems to be going on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So kind of related to extinction risk, there is a question or a section about what would be best for humanity? At what speed should AI progress for, for AI to be best for humanity? And there the results were kind of all over the place with 5% of participants saying that AI should move much slower or 30% saying somewhat slower, 25% saying at the current speed. 20% saying faster and 15% saying much faster. So that's that's a, that's a very kind of almost the same for, for each bucket, except for not many people think that AI should move much slower. What, what do you make of this? I find this interesting. Um, I'm not quite sure what to make of it because I guess I think I, I was initially like surprised seeing this because I guess I would have thought that if you, if you thought there was like a, a serious risk of extinction but also i guess like in this other question about concerns people have like quite a, like everything we ask them about you know a lot of people say is you know concern so given quite a lot of concerns about different things sort of any particular one of which seems quite serious i might have thought that there'd be more <laughs> more enthusiasm for, for moving slowly and so i'm not quite sure what to make of that 
I think thinking that AI, that we should try to slow down AI is like not overwhelmingly popular, even among people who are pretty concerned about AI risk. But I think much of the reason to not do that is for reasons to do with like arms races and that sort of thing. Not many AI experts are convinced that AI should move at a much slower speed. Is that just because it's such a downer if you're working on trying very hard on pushing this technology forward? And this is this is your life's work, maybe it, it's it's difficult to say that AI should move slower and, and that that would benefit humanity. It, is there such an effect, you think? I think there probably is such an effect. I think other things I could imagine are just, I don't know, it feels like a big deal in some way to ask or to sort of decide that you're against the thing that you're working on or something. Or like, I, I could imagine, you know, being tentatively in favor of, you know, AI progress and, until you've really thought about it a lot. But I think there are also various reasons you, you might think that even if you are pretty concerned about like AI causing some kind of catastrophe, that going slower wouldn't help. Um, like I think there, are, I guess among like people I know, I feel like there are various theories for why it would be better to go faster. They don't sound compelling to me. Um, but or, or sorry, I think in, in the survey we specifically said that the the speed would affect all of the projects equally. So that sort of rules out all of the things that they do, like arms races or like, you know, if it's important that this AI lab is ahead of this AI lab or something like that, which which I think accounts for a decent chunk of the lack of enthusiasm for going slower. But yeah, I think there are other stories around as well. There's this, there's a story surrounding compute overhang, so overhang in the amount of the chips and the the speed of those chips available to train AI, and then that continues to grow if we if we go slower. And so you can now build an uh, an advanced AI for less money, train an advanced AI for less money if we if we wait or if we pause or if we go slower. There's overhang in in algorithms too, or maybe maybe even in in, in collecting the right training data sets. I know you've thought about this, so maybe maybe what do you think about what speed should AI move? I'm actually I'm sort of on the fence. I think my like if I had to guess right now, I think s- slower. More specifically, I think probably pushing for it going slower is is good, but I would like to think more about it. Yeah, particularly because of these kind of arguments about overhangs and about yeah, like in, in practice <laughs> these sort of arms race considerations, or I guess yeah. I think it's really wrong to call it an arms race in many cases, or like it's an arms race implies certain things about the the incentives, which I think are not obviously true. For instance, you know, if everyone dies plausibly when you win, it's like not exactly the same winning as. <laughs> but yeah, tentatively, pro slower. Yeah, it's such a broad question and therefore probably difficult to answer. If if you're if you're a, a participant in this survey, for example, you might be a, an expert in a in a narrow domain in, in AI. But but asking whether AI should move at a, or what speed AI should move at to benefit humanity the most that's that involves economics and and all kinds of sociological societal questions that that you're not necessarily an expert in. That grappling with this question yourself, I, I think it isn't it difficult to to kind of wrap your head around all of the factors involved and and come to to a conclusion here i think there are like sort of different purposes of this survey though there's trying to find out what is true about the world and what will happen but i think it's also interesting to find out what is true about ai researchers and what they think about things like i think if ai researchers broadly think that their research is very dangerous and they expect it to go badly we're like that's very important relative <laughs> compared to a world where they're all like very gung ho, just in terms of like what kind of like cooperative things could be done. Okay, so let's dig into some of the specific scenarios that experts are worried about here, where almost everyone is basically worried about spreading false information and deep fakes and manipulating large scale public opinion. So what does this tell you? Like, what, why, why is there such, such agreement around those two issues? Yeah, I'm speculating. It's sort of, it seems like those are issues that are like, pretty close to happening. Like, they're, not, they're not speculative. I sort of wonder if people are like, combining probability and badness in a way that they would, in, if they thought a lot more about it here. I, I explain what you mean there, combining probability and badness. What, what do you mean? 
Well, they're answering they're answering like how concerning are these things, and I think can either be like very concerning because it's like extremely bad, and and a bit probable, or very concerning because it's like very probable and somewhat bad. I guess these things seem like they're decently probable and decently bad. I would consider a five percent chance of destroying the world <laughs> bad enough to overwhelm the less probability for some of these other things. I sort of wonder if they do not if they if they genuinely think there's like you know, if many of them genuinely think there's like a five percent chance of the world being destroyed or humanity being destroyed do they in f- fact think that that's overall a smaller concern i'm not sure i think a, a reason they might i mean they that we don't obviously disagree here is that like all of these other things kind of just mess or many of these things mess with everything such that like it, it seems plausible that i in fact should be more concerned about manipulation of public opinion than directly about like some particular extinction risk because manipulation of public opinion makes it quite hard to you know run society well like to have good like governance of the other things going on for instance technological risks such that yeah even even if these things don't immediately sound completely catastrophic if they make everything else go worse. They're sort of factors for for all of the problems. You could say that a society where we can't process information correctly is a society where we can't deal with basically any problem. If we don't, if we can't find out what's true, then how do we, you know, yeah, (laughs) where do we go from there? Uh, if I was trying to sort of deal man like the position that the the mo- the biggest concern is like manipulation of opinion or uh, or false information spreading, I think that's the kind of thing I would say. But I'm I'm not sure how much that's what they are thinking. So in terms of other specific risks they're worried about, they're worried about helping dangerous groups make powerful tools like engineered viruses. They're worried about authoritarian rulers using AI to control their population. And they are worried about making economic inequality worse. So I, I find the, the, the last one there is kind of in the same bucket as the spreading false information and deep fakes and manipulating public opinion to me and that it's a it's a kind of broad effect that in some sense uh, would would make society worse whereas whereas thinking about engineered viruses or authoritarian control those are, are more specific i think i disagree that those are more specific maybe more specific but still quite broad in that i don't know like if you think of covid i feel like that kind of screwed up everything in society for a bit there and so i feel like if if you're just dealing with even specific conflicts or like bad people doing things or, or or diseases, like they can just, you know, make everything more inconvenient. So when I read uh, papers by researchers specifically studying AI risk, I find them, they often talk about something like an, an engineered virus or an engineered pandemic. And they don't put the same weight on on misinformation or or false information or deep fakes. At least they haven't historically done so. Do, do you think? Yeah. Why is there this discrepancy between kind of broad AI researchers and researchers in in specific AI risk? One thing that that sort of comes up for me when I think about deep fakes, say, is that I think you could have argued that they would have been a huge problem like already. And I don't know of like huge amounts of like problem arising from them like, I, I feel like i sort of know of like scattered cases but it's not like oh yeah you just can't trust anything online anymore no one knows what's happening and so i, I think from my perspective a bit like i don't really understand how the information ecosystem causes most things to be either reliable or seem unreliable but whatever it's doing it's like not clear that being able to make a really good fake picture or something is a match for it. Like it's also it's like you could already like Photoshop things and like know that that made a huge difference to anything. Uh, and so now it's like cheaper and better perhaps. But like it's not clear to me that we just don't already have systems for dealing with that, given that it hasn't become a problem. And so if I'm a kind of representative example, which I'm probably not, but more representative of the kind of like people thinking about AI safety. It could be that that kind of view is more common there, uh, whereas I less know what the technical AI people are thinking. Yeah, although I think we have seen some examples of financial frauds using deepfakes, specifically voice deepfakes, where 
you you will you'll call an employee a scammer will call an employee p- pretending to be the the chief financial officer of a bank or something and uh, these are scams involving uh, millions of dollars <laughs> recently it's it's become possible to make a a fake picture of a driver's license that's usable enough to sign up for online services where you have to prove your identity and so <laughs> So you could see how these defects w- would begin to disrupt some of the systems we have for kind of making sense of the world and, you know, putting humans into into a human bucket and bots into a, the, the bot bucket. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like on paper that they should be able to disrupt various things like that. Maybe it's like, well, so far, like my experience of banking hasn't become like impossible or something due, due to like the rise of this kind of thing. And so it's like, I don't know, we haven't each experienced some huge problem from this. True. Not yet, at least. Okay, so you summarize uh, the participants in the survey as, as thinking that kind of high hopes and dire concerns for, for AI go to get, go hand in hand. So, so what, what does this mean? As, so participants who believe that AI could be extremely good also believe that AI could be extremely bad. Is, is, is this related to, to a kind of general belief in the power of intelligence itself, do you think? I mean, I guess I, I don't know that they more believe that than the people who don't. Maybe like, I think the, the observation is more like, like you might imagine that the expectations are pretty polarized, where there are some people who are like really optimistic and some are like, yes, yeah, definitely going to be fine, probably amazing. And some people who are like, no, nah, it's like very likely to be bad, <clears throat> probably like, terrible. Um, I think that's that's not what we see. It's more like the like the bulk of people have some probability on very bad, some probability on very good, some probability on sort of intermediate things. And so, yeah, I guess it's it's more like lots of people are on a similar page, very broadly similar. <laughs> Definitely have different probabilities on these different outcomes, but it's I guess quantitative, not qualitative, difference and sort of like not that polarized. You also asked about the scenario of an intelligence explosion where experts are also quite divided, I would say. So the, the intelligence explosion is a, a, the development of an AI system that accelerates technological progress. And then uh, that progress accelerates AI again. And then you get a kind of a feedback loop of AI improving AI until we have massive technological progress in in, a, in the span of say five years and experts believe that again i'll, I'll read the numbers here so so nine percent said that something like that is quite likely 20 percent said likely 24 percent say said about even chance 24 percent said unlikely and 23 percent said quite unlikely again it's 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 kind of like it's very evenly distributed except that only nine percent said said quite likely so so what do we make of it yeah, I mean, I think at a high level, it seems like predicting the future on these things is tricky and people are kind of all over the place. I, I think maybe the main thing we make, make of it is like most of them think that this is like a plausible thing to happen. Like this is the thing that you like, I guess, again, if it's a pretty important thing, then you don't really need to be at like 99% to, for it to be worth keeping an eye on. <laughs> so I think the decision relevant thing is kind of like, is this on the table? And it's like, yeah, pretty much everyone thinks it's on the table. So let's keep an eye out there. I, I think it, it's sort of ambiguous. I mean, I guess we, we said like less than five years in particular for more than an order of magnitude faster progress. So that's kind of specific. But I guess in general, we're talking about whether there'll be an intelligence explosion. Like we're talking about a feedback loop of technology, improving technology. That's kind of clearly happening all around us all the time and has been for a long time. And so the sort of question of like, how tight is the feedback loop? Or like, how fast is the feedback loop? Like, like surely AI is helping with AI already. Like, surely, you know, surely computers are helping with computers. Surely pencils are helping with pencils. <laughs> like, yeah. So then I think like, I think a complaint that I've had in the past is that people sort of quickly jump from there's a feedback loop to it, it might be arbitrarily fast. Like, I don't know. There are a lot of feedback loops. And <laughs> you need some reason to think it will be arbitrarily fast. I, I guess like if you're asking people, will there be something like this feedback loop? I can imagine them just sort of giving different answers based on whether they're thinking of this as like a really out there thing to happen or basically like, yeah, of course, AI is going to improve AI. So so the likelihood of an intelligence explosion depends on the the speed of the feedback loop. So how fast will a progress in AI 
cause further progress in AI. What, what do we know about the, the speed of the feedback loop or the tightness of the feedback loop? For example, I mean, we, we could ask, so large language models, how much do they improve programming at OpenAI or DeepMind or something like that? Is it 5%? Is it is it 50%? And that, that would be a pretty direct feedback loop, I, I, I would think. I actually don't know, but I, it sounds like the kind of thing someone might have actually checked, or at least for, for programming in general. I feel like maybe I've seen such numbers, but I can't remember them. I, I think I would guess that it's like non-negligible, but like not not like twice as fast or something. But yeah, I, th- I think things at that level of usefulness are like not crazy, as in like you get various software tools that are helpful uh, and software generally gets faster. Yeah, th- this question of intelligence explosion is kind of related to discontinuous progress, which is something uh, you've written about. And there, I think the, ma- the main conclusion is that, first of all, what is discontinuous progress? I guess when I've written about it, I'm talking about like jumps in progress. So like something's going along at some rate and then suddenly things are much better. In particular, we tried to measure it in terms of how many years of past progress happened in one jump. So if, if there was like a lot of improvement but there had also been a lot of improvement <laughs> like the last three times something was discovered that it might not be a discontinuity. Uh, ex- for example, I, I looked into penicillin as used for syphilis, you know, which was apparently incredible. But also the, the earlier, the, I think the previous drug was nicknamed the silver bullet because it was like so amazing compared to the drug before that. It's easy for it not to, to be an actual jump in the progress trend. I think so, some examples in, in AI of discontinuous or jumpy progress would be alpha zero for chess, where we see a, a large jump in, 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 in the capability of chess engines, or GPT-3 for language modeling or, or language understanding. Do, do you agree that those, are, those would be examples of, of discontinuous progress? I'm not sure without looking at the trends. I think one thing I learned is that often things are popularly believed to be discontinuities because they seemed pretty wild but if you sort of look at them like whatever the progress was in the background was kind of already heading for there so yeah it seems plausible so i i think one conclusion you draw about discontinuous progress is that the the base rate for for such jumpy progress is is quite low this this is something that doesn't happen often and that there are many feedback loops out there, uh, but that these feedback loops are, are maybe not fast enough to cause these jumps. Is AI the exception to, to, to these low base rates? I think actually we, we weren't, I guess like I would usually divide the predictions of AI having sudden increases in performance into two categories, kind of like before the AI is very helpful for building more AI and after, where after is where you would see an intelligence explosion. And when I've been working on this, I've mostly actually been just thinking about before. And so not really thinking about like how fast feedback loops feedback on themselves, but more like the other traits of AI make it likely that leading up to human level, you would see a big jump where I think often people have, or people thinking about AI safety have thought that there would be like quite a jump getting to human level and then that would sort of lead to an intelligence explosion. Or that an intelligence explosion would like start quite suddenly, which I think is implicitly claiming that there would be quite a jump to getting there, because otherwise you might expect that it sort of starts slowly and you know, when AI is a little bit useful for AI and contributes to itself more and more. If it's sort of like you make a thing that one day is like, all right, now I'm going to in five seconds it explode into a super intelligence, it sort of implies that it, it went from very bad at improving itself to very good at improving itself prior to that intelligence explosion. And so then you have a question of like, well, why did it see that huge jump? So that's the thing that I've mostly thought about. And there, I think I didn't, I couldn't find any arguments for AI being different that seemed clearly compelling. Though I think there were various ones that like maybe could be compelling if with, like they weren't clearly uncompelling. I just like want more information. So the thing that I've done on this is like look at a lot of other technologies and see how often there are jumps in any kind of technological progress trend, and then also go and try and find arguments that AI would be different. Yeah, I haven't I haven't much looked at will AI be different in terms of intelligence explosions 
question. You've written about this kind of threshold around human level intelligence. This is what you, you talked about earlier, where I guess the expectation would be that if we can get AI to a human level, when we cross uh, that threshold, we will get AIs will be much more valuable and will have an, an enormous impact in the world. But when they are right below the human level threshold, they won't have that impact. And so it is maybe we could we could say that kind of AI progress will sneak up on us because at some point AI will be a better programmer than the best human programmers. But before that point, AIs aren't having uh, enormous impact. And right, right when they cross that that kind of human level threshold is when there's a there's a huge kind of huge payout to to all of the AI development. Is, is that a plausible picture to you? I think not really. I think it's like a, I think that might be like a, a part of the picture, but I think like it's sort of substantially missing just that human, like there are lots of different humans with lots of different abilities at different things. And there's a point you could call like crossing, like like surpassing humans where, you know, AI is able to do literally everything, let's say literally everything better than one particular human, Bob. It's maybe like by the time it can do better than Bob at everything, like Prior to that, there were a lot of things it could do a lot better than Bob at, because it's just going to have a different distribution of abilities. And so I think we're going to see like a more continuous set of like things that AI is more worth paying to do X for than Bob over time, leading up to being able to do literally everything. <laughs> I think also for many things, it, it's like, even if you're worse at everything right, than, than someone else, like you can often still help as long as, you know, th there are still things to be done. So I, I think even if AI is worse, it's going to be used for lots of things. And so I think that's an, sort of another reason to expect things to happen more continuously. It's more like, well, whatever AI exists is collaborating with whatever humans exist. People are much too quick to sort of assume that whoever is smartest and best will do like literally everything. And why is it why is it that they won't do everything? So so why is it say that I'm I'm the CEO of a corporation? Why wouldn't I just choose kind of the the highest performing AI to to do all the tasks? Oh, well, you might choose the highest performing AI to do all the tasks if if you can like pay to you know have as much of that AI as you want. But if the AI is not as good as Bob, you can't actually pay Bob to do all of the tasks because Bob is like a more limited entity. You, you might end up paying the AI to do half the tasks, even if it's worse than many of your employees, either because like, you know, there are only so many employees you can get or because there are like tasks that it, it is apt for, even if it's not. Yeah, I think economists in general, I kind of worried that that we might be making a mistake if we say that when AI gets to a certain point, AI will do all the tasks in the economy or do all the jobs. Because even if my productivity is is ten percent of, of of the best AI, I can still contribute something, and so I can still be part of the economy. Do you think that argument holds, or is AI such a kind of step change that it will be like saying, you know? the horses can still be part of the modern economy, even though they aren't as fast as cars. See, like, where does this argument go? It seems like you're like, all right, well, I guess like 101 economics is like comparative advantage. You, like everyone can do something. But it seems like everyone is doing something for some wage in practice. Like everyone is some amount useful. It seems like, in fact, if you, know, you can do something in the AI world, but the amount that you can get paid for it is like, what it would cost to like run a machine for one second and you get that every year or something, then it's like implausible that you will be able to live on that salary. And I think that's probably where this runs into the ground, except you might ask, well, can you live on that salary? Maybe, maybe you can, because like maybe the maybe the world is sufficiently productive that like at this point we're sort of making, you know, predictions about the the price of like beans in a future AI economy. And I, I guess I don't actually know how to demonstrate that you won't be able to support yourself, but it seems plausible to me if I knew slightly more economics than I could. And, and the argument there would be that everything is so cheap that even if, if your, your, your wages are very low and you, you might not be able to find a lot of work, you, you can still earn enough to support yourself and maybe even leave a, kind of live a luxurious lifestyle. Right, but I guess like 
I guess the way you go with this is like, all right, suppose that I can do a certain amount of work in a year, then like how much AI does it take to do that work? Let's say like AI can just be like more and more of it can be built. So let's say that the AI that, yeah, I think it's the, the AI that can like do the same work as me and can be like arbitrarily produced is going to do it for less money than, it's going to take less for it to exist than for me, that it seems like it can push the the wage below where I can live and so then I can't live. I think that's that's how I would run this argument and then say you are in fact at some point screwed. Um, but yeah, I'm not an economist. So. Okay, so, so when we're thinking about discontinuous progress in AI and the possibility of an intelligence explosion, how relevant is it, is it to think about human evolution and the difference between our brain and, and the brain of, of our closest evolutionary ancestors? I guess, what would you think about that specifically with respect to uh, intelligence explosions? It would be something like, look at how powerful humans are. There isn't that much difference between the brain of a human and the brain of a chimpanzee. And so if we get AI at a certain level, maybe, maybe not that more capable on some kind of metrics than us, their impact on the world will be enormously greater than our impact on the world, or their power in the world will be much greater than our power. Maybe you don't need very much intelligence explosion to get you like heaps of power. I feel like would this argument not just apply to all kinds of things that you may feel like, I don't know, if we just put a little bit more effort into our product, maybe it will radically remake the world or something, which does happen sometimes with products, but like obviously not. I guess the thought that this would only apply to like, you know, agents or something. Because we could also say, I don't know, like elephants. Sometimes there are better elephants that they suddenly like take over and, and kill all the other animals or something, like not so much. So I don't know, I, I guess I, I want to have like a clear picture of what is being claimed and then like check it against other empirical observations we can make. Yeah, I, I guess the argument would be something like uh, being 25% better is, is a world of difference. And, and so if, if AI becomes kind of slightly superhuman, it will suddenly be much more powerful th th than, than we are. Right, like, so there's some metric of brain goodness and it's like a small amount of movement on the brain goodness scale will get you like vast amounts of power. It's the thought, right? And so I guess like the claim that like all humans are basically at the same point on the brain goodness scale, except like very disabled people. Yeah, only to the to the extent that all chimpanzees are kind of on the same level on the on the brain scale too. So so at least the, at least both chimpanzees and humans cluster around some some level of, of intelligence or capability. I don't know if, if the variability is, is greater within chimpanzees or, or humans, but at, at least we are, it's kind of coherent to say that, that we are different and, and that uh, chimpanzees are cluster around some kind of somewhere on the brain scale and, and humans cluster around a, a, a different point on, the, on that scale. Maybe one big point here is if you've got a particular an individual human, an individual chimpanzee, and neither of them has any access to culture, does the human do heaps better than the chimpanzee in terms of dealing with the world? My guess is not. And so I guess I haven't thought a lot about this lately, but my impression is that there's a good chance that it's sort of like human culture and our ability to do human culture that makes humans great. On that kind of story where it's like an individual human is pretty powerless, but the meager set of things they learn in their lifetime, they get to add to a big pile that everyone else borrows from and adds to oh, and the chimpanzees aren't doing that i think you would ask like in that picture what does ai look like and it's like well it might be even better at adding to such a pile still an individual ai if the thing that we're looking at is being like markedly better than humans at these things like if it's markedly better at getting the meager things that it adds to the pile it's still not going to make it suddenly better than the whole pile uh, unless it's like really is vastly better. If it's better at sort of adding things to the pile and taking them off the pile, that seems like it might cause it cause an individual one to be like substantially better than an individual human at doing things. So you might ask like, are we then going to have multiple different piles? Like there's a human pile and the AI pile. Like why would you have that? You might expect that everyone's still sort of contributing to the same pile. 
Yeah, except maybe we can't understand what the AIs are doing, right? Maybe they are they're building upon our concepts in ways that are kind of opaque to us and so they're begin they're beginning to build their own culture that that we can't benefit from and then you get this kind of they run away from us in terms of understanding or, or power in the world I, I think it's an interesting frame to stay in because i think what, what we're seeing right now is that ais are consuming kind of humanity's culture all of it basically if you if you if you're if you're training on the internet right you're, you're getting the 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 entire culture of, of humanity or at least a, lo- a large part of it but i i guess the, the question there is how efficient are they at benefiting from that culture uh, or becoming smarter as a result of training on that culture so AIs are, are, are large language models and, and specifically are, are, are sample inefficient compared to humans. We, they don't get as much out of a, a piece of, of, of data as we do. And so maybe, maybe they're falling behind there. Or Yeah, do you think that's temporary? Do you think, is this a useful frame for understanding AI development? I think my guess is that it's like useful at the moment and, and will become not useful at some point. Yeah. In terms of like adding things to the pile, I feel like I also don't really know of like a really, like really interesting insights or something that have been added by AI to my knowledge, except for like maybe things that are in the news, like like I guess deep mind things, you know, some kind of discovery that I don't know the details of. I I'm thinking more like I can think of, you know, insight like cases where my friends have an insight they tell me or something and i'm like that sort of changes my model of the world uh like how often does that happen for me i like are there ones floating around that are making a difference to my picture of the world now but i don't really know they came from ai maybe yeah i agree that we haven't seen kind of deep scientific insights yet i would i would say maybe there was a a a deep mind paper on discovering a new algorithm in a new computer science yeah. algorithm for yeah for, for speeding up some 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 kind of low level process, but I agree that we have we haven't seen great scientific advances. Yeah, I think I, I wasn't mostly pointing at like you know fancy science things. I, I mean even just like um, I don't know like someone writes an op ed and they're like you know maybe we should think about this thing happening in politics this way instead of that way and i'm like oh yeah maybe but you haven't seen you haven't you've, you haven't seen that from from uh, language models maybe i have and I, i'm like you know not not remembering it yeah maybe maybe like among like my asking chat gpt stuff about my life or something i feel like there have been like some some things where i'm like oh i mean i i think if we if we look at the results from from your survey uh, experts predict that we'll get that kind of insight at least at some point when was the prediction around getting to the to an, an ai written new york times bestseller i forget but i think it was about seven years just around 2030 so at least in the, the experts think it's coming right so Yes. To the extent that a New York Times bestseller adds to the kind of collective uh, culture of humanity, we, we'll we'll get that. Yeah. AI scaling is also <laughs> is also kind of an important topic. And what do you think is most important in in the scaling process? If, if we kind of split out the ingredients into computing power, training data, and algorithms, what is what is most important for scaling AI? I feel pretty ignorant about this question, but we did ask in the survey something, something like this. We asked about different inputs, and and like if, yeah, for each of them, if if there had been like I forget what it was, like half as much of it in the last time period, how much less AI progress would we have seen? And I guess I find the answers there surprising in that it seems like well, people are very divided, and also not not like in a polarized way just feel like their answers are all over the place and like kind of similar across the board whereas i, th- I think my impression was that that there's at least a popular narrative that like hardware is you know, most of it and so i think this was some evidence against that though i do wonder there if people understood the question properly <laughs> like to be on this one in particular i anyway, like it was a hard question to understand like it was kind of complicated I agree that there's a narrative out there around compute being the the main and the most important ingredient. But I do wonder how 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 you could trade off between say you have less compute but more training data, less compute but better algorithms, and so on. It's it's a complex issue. Did you did do you have an impression of that? Or did did you find anything out about that in in the survey? 
I generally haven't looked into this in a while, so I, I think there is stuff out there about it that, that I'm not familiar enough with. In the survey, we didn't ask people to trade things off against each other, but we sort of asked for each different thing, what if that was lower? And I think the, the various things we asked about looked more comparable than expected. And it wasn't such that compute stood out as the, as the kind of overall most important factor in the expert opinion. Right. I think, I think it was kind of similar to other things. Okay, I want to I want to end by doing some kind of you could call it rapid fire questions or at least your your impressions of what we should do. So so you've been in you're kind of a veteran of thinking about AI risk. You've been interested in this topic for a long time. Uh, what what's the best best path forward here? <laughs> yeah, w where are we and what what should we do and 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 what are the best proposals for for AI safety? I feel like it depends a lot who we are, what we should do. Um, I, I think like, I guess at a high level, I, I'd broadly be in favor of like regulating it a bunch more in terms of sort of individual action. I think for a lot of people, it would probably be good to just like have their eye on this topic more and try to be like right about it as much as it's feasible. Like, uh, you know, try and have accurate enough opinions that to the extent you're opinions bear on our part of public opinion and change what happens like in terms of regulating it that that they're a force for good because i think it's very high stakes maybe also selfishly just try and pay attention to how this is going to actually affect your life quite soon for most people yeah how do you think your opinions about that are differ from from mainstream opinions what what do you believe is going to happen to us personally that that is not kind of widespread in culture and i think for for various of these narrow forecasts about what will happen in the next few years that could affect particular people like i mean if if it's true that you know within five years ai could could build a website from scratch i think for a lot of people that means they should be investing in different things than the ones they might be investing in that sort of thing anything else comes to mind i guess generally like investing in labor seems less good versus investing in like you know having other investments in the, in the longer run yeah. Have you have you have you changed your life based on what you've you've learned about AI over the last decade? I mean, it seems like life is pretty different in that I you know, am working a lot on this sort of thing. So like my life would look extremely different if uh if AI wasn't involved, but more like I don't know. I mean I think it, it probably makes me more hesitant to have children right now, say partly because like it's probably a lot of effort and it seems like this is a really important issue that I don't want to not put effort into. But also I just feel like the technology might change a lot in the coming years. So for instance, maybe you could have like a much healthier child or something if like, like if there's just a lot of technological progress in the coming decades, I could imagine it being better to do this later. Something like that. All right. Thanks for thanks for chatting with me Katja it's been it's been formative thank you thank you for having me